Can you get a full electric vehicle for less than five grand that still has its original range intact? That's the challenge I was set by a, an anti-EV person, shall we say. They originally said you couldn't do it for less than 10 grand. I said that was easy, I could do it with half the amount, and here we are. So part one tells you how I found the car. Part two, this video is showing you the car itself. Yes, I got it for less than 5,000 pounds, but what state is it in? Does it have its original range? Is it battered? Is there something wrong with it? Is half of it falling apart? What's it like? To put it to context how difficult this was, there were only 44 on Autotrader that met the criteria of under £5,000 and full electric out of 450,000 on Auto Trader, So we're talking bottom of the EV used market in terms of the cheapest cars you can buy. And I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm quite chuffed. I think I've done quite well on this one because, well, it's a cracker. Let me give you the details. It's a 2016 Renault Zoe Dynamic Nav. January 2016 to be exact, so that's a 65 reg. It's done 35,500 miles and it's got a full Renault service history. It's also got, thanks to the previous owner, full Renault warranty. He extended the original one each year until next April. So the whole car is under warranty. And what did I pay for this gem? £4,400. And before anybody who hasn't watched the previous video says, what about the battery lease? That's like 50, 60 quid a month. It's fully battery owned, no lease, the whole thing is mine. Does it have its original range? Is this seven and a half year old car, the seven and a half year old battery, still as good as it was when it was new? To get it back here, I have to drive it from South Wales because, well, that's where the car was. 260 miles. That journey told me everything I needed to know. Four charge stops, 22 kilowatt AC charging only, and uh, yeah. Clearly this car is designed for local driving as a second vehicle, even when it was new. So doing that length of journey is hardly optimal, but even then out of a full charge, or if I'd have run it down to full anyway, several times I would have got about 94 miles out of a single charge, which essentially means that given the average according to EV database is 85 miles for this car, tells me it's still as good as it was when it was new. If I'm getting 94 miles on what was 90% motorway driving, then that means that it's fine. In fact, driving around local area, work commuting, I've done that for the past week or two, and I'm getting over 100 miles to the charge. This seven and a half year old car, the battery, somehow miraculously is fine. And we've even named it because it's a, it's a car that many people believe doesn't exist. So we've decided to call this the G-Spot. So what's wrong with it, I hear you ask, because 4,400 pounds for this, a 2016 Zoe, even with a battery lease, that's a good price, it's a bloody good price. I promise you, there is no catch. The used market in the moment is very much in the buyer's favor. The car was in South Wales, that's not easy to get to for a lot part of the country, so I think that had a play. And the wording could have been better, shall we say, on the advert because there are a couple of things that nearly put me off, that nearly made me not ring up. One was the fact that he said it's had a new motor and air conditioning system about three and a half years ago. So I'm thinking, well, what, well, ooh, that, ooh, who's done that? New one, used one, yeah, that, that, mm, I'm not sure. Well, that's why you need to ring people up to get the full story because when I spoke to him, he said, yep, we got it and the air conditioning unit I don't know what had happened, but ultimately it took out the motor and it was all replaced about three and a half years ago by Renault under warranty. And essentially that means the motor has done 15,000 miles and is three and a half years old. So that's a, that's a benefit. But the way it was worded in the uh, advert, I think it kind of put people off. So I think for me, just a bit of patience, willingness to travel. And uh, well, the fact that he had bought his replacement meant I got a cracking deal. It is seven and a half year old, so cosmetically, what is wrong with it, both on the outside and on the inside? 
I should point out that this hasn't had any cleaning or anything since I got back, but the front is, well, it's spot on. I mean, there's, there's no stone chips or anything like that. The bumper is in great condition. There's absolutely no bumps, dinks, door dings or anything. Yeah, rear bumper down the side again. It's all in cracking condition. Even the wheels, got a little bit of uh, curb rash on them, but for the most part, the spot on. It's just a bit grubby. Needs a bloody good clean. Again, same with the boot. Bit of a clean. There's even. Hardly any scratches are all right on here. There's one there, who oh, no. The back seats. I don't think they've been used. <laughs> I mean, ever. Bear in mind again, this isn't any, any clean or anything. Front dash, other than a couple of scuff marks, which I would expect on a seven and a half year old car, everything is just as you'd expect it to be for a, I would say, a very near mint car. The only issue I've found is this silver stuff that's flaking off. Any Renault people, can you get that? Or do you have to replace this kind of bezel if I want to sort that out? I'm thinking of just flaking off all the silver stuff so it's all white. Even the driver's seat hasn't got any wear or, you know, it hasn't flopped or anything. The, the seat's just fine. It's all good. Not the best key in the world, I have to admit. But, there's the charge port, all good there as well, just as it was the day it came in the factory. Roof, no marks, dings, scratches. You know when you have tick boxes for a car, and you think, well, these are the things that I absolutely need. This is my minimum requirement for what I'm looking for. And then you have the tick boxes for the wants, the nice to haves. I expected to hit my target, the under 5,000 pound, you know, good battery sort of thing that we said at the beginning of the video. I expected to do that. But even I didn't expect to find this, a 2016 car. I, th I thought it'd be a nine, probably 10 year old uh, Zoe. I thought, well, service history is semi-immaterial, as long as it's in good working order, I'm not too concerned. There's not much to service in an EV, really. It's not like, you know, you've got to make sure it, the oil's been changed regularly, anything like that. But it's got full Renault service history. The range, well, that was an absolute requirement. So I, I needed and wanted and tried to get the, you know, the full range. So that wasn't something I could be flexible with. Because like any car in the world, there are good, there are bad. There are some that have been looked after. There'll be ones out there, there'll be Zoe's that have got knackered batteries. The spec, dynamic nav, I believe that's mid to high range on the spec sheet. The stereo even, I think it's Archimis. It's way better than I expected. And it's just quiet, it's refined for a car of its size. And another thing that I think that's worth pointing out, this car is based on a Renault Clio. Brilliant, it's starting to rain in the middle of summer, again. Anyway, this is based on a Clio, so a petrol Clio is the equivalent. And this is the cheapest Renault Clio that's on Autotrader right now. It's a lot more expensive than this Renault Zoe. So are we looking at a point where on the used market, we're actually getting that price parity, where EVs, used EVs, are actually a similar price to their equivalent petrol cars? Because that's one big consideration, isn't it? That's one big negative. When you buy a brand new one, certainly, it's more expensive to buy the EV than the petrol or diesel. So maybe we're getting to that stage now. We're finally getting round to, brilliant, uh, affordability on the electric car front. The only downside to this is, well, the same as it was when it was brand new. It does 80 odd miles range on average. So, you know, it is a local car. There's no debate in that. It's for a second vehicle in the household, work and back, school run, shopping. I'll probably be able to use this every day for commuting because how many times do I do more than, let's say, 70 miles on a working day? It occasionally happens, which is very rare, and I go from site to site. So this is what I would call a proper, cheap, 
runabout. I was going to start detailing the hell out of this car to get it as mint as possible, but I think I might leave it a bit. <laughs> it's not a long range car. I'm not saying it's a direct replacement for a petrol equivalent, the Clio, for example. I'm just saying it's getting better than it was. The used market for EVs just a year ago was so inflated, you were paying almost as much for a used one than you were a brand new one. Now, well, we're back to normal. Prices haven't tanked, they've just reset back to normal uh, depreciation levels, if you like, for a car. I must admit though, I never intended on keeping this car. It was buy it, get some content out of it, sell it. Hell, at the price I paid, I am certain I will make money on this car. I have been looking for reasons to keep it. The only thing that's stopping us do this, because this would be a perfect second car for the Tesla. That does the long stuff. And if I want work things like it has been for the last three and a half years, our other car, the Mini Cooper S that we had for six and a half years now, I barely drive it. She uses it when I'm at work and vice versa. But when she goes to a parent's house, that's where that one can do something this can't. It's roughly a 130 mile round trip. You'd have to charge this. Uh, probably at a mum and dad's house, which isn't going to happen. So therefore, for that reason alone, we, we won't be keeping it. I might try. I'm going to, I'm going to push because 4,400, that's worth at least double that. I could, I could use that money for something else. Okay, well, thank you for watching, guys. Um, let me know what you think. I am absolutely chuffed. I think I've done a cracking job on this one, if I don't say so myself. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it surprised me, I have to say. Hit the target, yes. I think I've blown past it. So I wonder what's going to happen at the higher price brackets. What can you get for 10 grand these days in the electric car world? Maybe that could be the next, uh, next video. Let me know what you think. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Um, to the person that gave me this idea that challenged me to this. Ha, 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 ha. And thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe. That's the only way I've been able to temporarily use the money to buy this for content and then sell it again because you support the channel. I don't mean financially, just clicking the subscribe button, clicking on a, a link if I ever have a sponsored video. You don't have to buy anything, but clicking on it really helps. And of course, the old subscribing. Every time you comment on any YouTube video from any channel, it helps increase the interaction and therefore YouTube pushes it more. If you do want to spot the channel and get the videos on Sunday instead of Friday, that's 99p. Just click the join button next to subscribe. You can't do it on iOS because that's Apple for you. And don't forget about the second channel, Driving Home. That's where the podcast now sits. And I will be doing a couple of videos about this car, probably when I detail the hell out of it and well whatever else comes up so that's the second extra content channel driving home link in the description below thanks for watching bye i'm going to enjoy my zoe whilst i have it